Hello, I'm Silver Anchor, and I'm trying something new today. I'm going to draw a page in a uh, grimoire, I suppose. Some people call it a book of shadows, but maybe mine's a book of silver. Because shadow means hidden, and if I'm showing it to you, it's not hidden anymore, right? <laughs> So, drawing something new, I just thought it would be uh, fun to draw for you. And thinking about what to draw today, I uh, just started Leo season, uh, July 23rd. So that was just this week. And I'd like to draw every week, something to do on the weekend. I desperately need something to occupy me to do the thing. So what I did is I sketched last night and I used uh, carbon to transfer onto this paper. Um, I'm thinking I might, I'm just going to leave it on here to ink, but then I'm thinking about putting some watercolor down and I'm going to take the paper off so it won't uh, bleed to the rest of the, the sketchbook. So I've just, I've, I'm going to start, let's start over here with the uh, the Leo symbol. And the symbols always look like hair to me, which is appropriate for Leo because you can usually tell someone has some Leo in their chart. If it's not their sun, maybe it's their moon or another part of them. I have my Venus in Leo. We're going to also put the different planetary aspects on this sheet. But Leo is ruled by the sun and shines bright like the sun. And their hair is just like the mane on the lion. It's, it is their pride, their drama, dramatic hair, fluffy hair, glorious crowns, and I'm rotating my paper because these squiggly lines don't always look right if I try and draw them from another angle. That's a good tip for drawing is turn your page around instead of contorting yourself or drawing something wonky. So, sorry, oops, bumped the camera. Sorry if the view is crazy. I want my little sunburst to look nice. So there's the sun with the Leo symbol in there. Let's go on to that lion. I spent yesterday sketching some lions. I don't know how well my uh, sketch is showing up here. The, the ghosting so to speak, but it really gives a good guideline uh, before I go down with the ink. I think ink has become my favorite medium. I'm, I'm already thinking about Inktober. I know it's only August. That's well, not August yet. It's still July. <laughs> but I'm already in an August mindset. I've got a new project I'm working on at work in August, and I've been thinking about it. I think I'm ready for July just to be done. I think we're just ready for 2020 to be done. But I don't think anything's going to change with a new calendar year. I'm pretty sure it's just going to spread into 2020. What we've already been experiencing. It's really been a, an interesting year. I did a tarot reading, actually. I'm, you might have seen me talk about it in my last video, but... That reading got, um, one, I didn't like how the camera was set up, but two, it got kind of dark. Um, <laughs> well, after viewing it, I was like, I don't really want to share this. This is, it got just too dark for me. This is the first time I've tried to draw on camera. I've, I've tried to set this up a few times. One thing I've learned is not to put the camera on the same table. 
I've actually got it hooked up to a table next to me because sometimes if I'm I'm working on the table it shakes. And I've I've videotaped some other stuff, but ha it's still I guess it, in the phone. I don't have a proper camera. I'm using my telephone. It's the tool I have. But I'm, I've been promising myself if I if I keep doing some drawings and, and kind of prove to myself this is something I'm going to do, then I can reward myself with a camera. I just don't feel that it's the right time, but I usually just wait till I'm sure about a purpose. I'm going to try this Tombow brush pen to write Leo. Hopefully, hopefully you Leos out there can take pride in my work. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit nervous because this is the first time I've, I've done something like this. So I hope it works out well. Let's just, just give it a go. Just, just, just do it. Well, it is what it is. I've been kind of practicing on brush pen and lettering. And I've decided not to overthink because I think that was really holding me back on just starting doing these was wanting, you know, like, like archival level. Uh, Leo is a fire sign, so I do like using the alchemic symbols. I think it's, it's a useful shorthand for one, even though I'm writing the word fire next to it. I have room, but it's a good uh, training tool. Leo is fixed, meaning that they, once they form an opinion, they're, they're, they're fixed. Uh, it's unlikely that they're going to change position. And fire um, gives, I think, to their leadership qualities and um, just the sun, the sunflower, the lion, just very fiery symbols. And here I'm going to put the sun symbol. Which always makes me think of Dr. Manhattan. If you remember, his symbol on his, on his forehead looked like this. And it was for the uh, helium atom. Which that could also be a symbol for. Which I find fascinating is the sun is full of just helium and hydrogen. It's a nuclear reactor continuously exploding in our sky. And it's the source of all energy on our planet. It's, it's kind of fascinating. I used to teach science is, you know, of course there's solar power. Wind power is the air heated by sun, then moving to even out the temperature of the atmosphere. And what's another form of power we have? We burn a lot of coal and oil on our planet. And those are both from dead animals and trees, which the trees are energized by the sun and the animals eat the, the plants, you know, and all those dead dinosaurs that have turned into oil. So it's, it's kind of interesting that all power sources can trace their way back to that energy of our sun. So I thought here I would write some of the attributes of Leo. And the first one I always think of is just pride. I'm going to write proud. And I don't really have a special script. I like to write my Fs like that, but I'm, I'm not, I'm just not going to nitpick about it. And I didn't. I read this word yesterday. It's not something I use in regular conversation. Magnanimous. Reminds me of the word magnificent, which it might be related to that. But it means generous. And Leos are known for giving gifts. They like to give gifts to their loved ones. Leos are charming. Charming. 
dramatic hair. I'm going to mention the hair. A lot of the sources I looked at didn't mention hair, but I remember reading it at some point, and I've always thought that Leos take great pride in their hair. They like it how they want it. They don't want to listen to what other people have to say about, oh, you should wear your hair like this. It's, no, I'm not going to cut it. I want it long. I want it glorious. I want it waving in the wind. And that's their confidence. It's that old story about Samson and his hair. I mean, hair can give you confidence. I know when mine looks good, I feel like I can do anything. Lavish. What a word. They love luxurious things. Feeling fancy. Music. Art. Which brings us to creative. Assertive. Setting how I want to draw my A. I think I'm going to do it like this. I usually don't draw that many cursive S's. I don't like cursive R, so I don't draw it. I feel like my script is a blend of cursive and script. I also like writing in all caps, but I thought that might look weird. We might do that in some cases. Generous. Which might be similar to magnanimous, but it's one of those words you don't hear that every day. And honest. So just some descriptor words to get in the mood of what what is Leo. And here, I'm probably not going to trace this. I think I'm going to just watercolor I'm gonna write that the um, when I'm writing Sun I mean that Sun season is one that stays fixed every year and that's usually what people know is their Sun sign but we're gonna talk about other planetary aspects so if you were born between July 23rd and August 22nd you are a Leo Kind of went outside the border, but I'm probably going to erase that anyway. I'm going to um, erase all these pencil marks before we put down any color. But I like I like to plan. Hopefully we see everything. I'm going to move the canvas up a little bit. And I just mentioned earlier that there are different planetary aspects. So I've, I'm only going to put seven planets and there's a couple reasonings for that and you know people can get sad about Pluto I, I discussed it with a co-worker the other day she got whiny about Pluto and I mean I was upset at first but I also understand the reasoning behind it and, and some people are saying maybe some of these things that are happening now is we angered the god of death by taking away his planet that was given the name to honor him you know, there's might be some truth in there um, I'm gonna do the seven that can be seen from earth okay because you can't you can use telescopes of course that's how we know that uranus and neptune and pluto exist right vulcan might be out there somewhere right which i know about as a virgo virgos here's mercury right here virgos are ruled by mercury but they're sharing it with Gemini. And I remember reading once is there's another planet we still don't see yet. And it would be called Vulcan. Uh, and it would replace Mercury for the Virgo's ruling planet. Because there's only so many planets. I think right now we have, including the sun and moon, we have um, nine. Because remember, you're not counting Earth. So it's ten. right? But we have 12 horoscope symbols. So some of them have to double up. And I know the sun is not a planet, but it is what we have ruling Leo. And sometimes you have to put in perspective of when this all started, you know, is we just saw objects floating in the sky. And of course, the sun and moon are just some of them, right? The sun and moon are very regular and we use them for our dates. Um... You may have seen these symbols before. Um, this is the sun, moon, 
Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Uh, these planets are gigantic, uh, so we can see them from Earth. They look like very large stars. And the way you can tell when you look at the sky, if you're looking at a planet or you're looking at a star, planets don't twinkle. Stars are very far away and the light gets interrupted on the way here. Um, of course, you're looking at them from you know, thousands, millions of years ago. They might be dead by now. It's kind of weird that you're looking at an ancient photograph if you think about that. Let me leave this up here. So I thought I would write some of the ways the Leo aspects come out in the different um, planets. And we're most familiar with Leo and Sun. If you're born in these days of the year and the Sun repeats the cycle every year, unchanging, maybe. There's a theory that if you're familiar with Ascension, and this is why we're in the age of Aquarius, so to speak, is that the universe is, from our perspective, perspective is, is wobbling, right? So the stars are actually moving in relative position. And ancient astronomers knew this uh, 2,000 years ago. And we actually moved into the age of Pisces. Now, if you think about it, at the beginning of the year is Aries. Aries is the first sign when you start. It used to be the new year. We'll get into that later. Um, but they noticed that the sun was actually not in Aries at that time. It was in Pisces, which is the last one. It's going backwards. And astronomers at the time were noticing this, the knowledge to people. This was the same time as uh, Christ. And, you know, it was a very secret club because it was, it was not accepted to be worshiping him in that time period. So they used the fish as a secret symbol. So you often see that fish with uh, Christianity now as a symbol of Christianity. So if you weren't sure why people put those fish bumper stickers on their car, um, that's why. So the moon is your subconscious. If you can think of the sun as your ego, your most outward characteristics. And that's why the sun sign is usually pretty good for describing who you are, but people are multi-leveled, right? So the sun is the ego where the moon is more your subconscious, your um, emotional side. And so if you have the moon and Leo, and the way you'll know if you have these is to do your chart, because this is what sign was the moon in at the time of your birth. And this one can really depend on what time it was. That's why a lot of times to do your chart, someone will ask, well, what time were you born and where were you born? Because that really gives the time because the moon, as you know, moves through these signs very quickly. It goes through all 12 uh, in one moon, right? A 28 day period. Love loves luxury and admiration. I think that's an E. I wrote an O on my notes. I'm not going to get super upset if I misspell a word. Some people are, no, it is an O. Well, maybe it'll be like a loopy O. Admiration. It's almost like those when you do a spelling test and you try to make your I look kind of like an E, so maybe it could go either way and the teacher won't notice. Yeah, I never fooled the teacher. <laughs> but I was awful at spelling tests. I would have to study very hard on spelling tests. Uh, my, my fifth or sixth grade teacher was really into spelling correctly now we don't practice it as much because we have the computers to tell us that it's only in situations like this where you're drawing by hand um it comes up and you're like oh but you can check on a phone really quickly now i remember when p parents would say well go look it up it's like i don't know how to spell it how am i supposed to look it up you know i guess if you knew the first few letters you'd be good but um now on to Mercury. Mercury uh, is the god of, he was this, the messenger between the gods. So it's communication, how you communicate, how you work with other people. It can be my, kind of like your professional, because um, communication is a lot about what you do. 
So a strong willpower. I wish I had that. So doing your chart is a lot easier today. I used to do them by hand and it's, it's an arduous process and, and some people still do that. If, especially if you're hiring someone, they might charge you uh, 50 to $100 to do your chart because it's very personal because it's not just the day you were born, you know, arbitrarily. It didn't matter if you were born in 1977 or 1997, you're still a Leo, right? But these planets were in a very different position um, 20 years, 30 years apart, right? And they still affect you now. There's people who do uh, the horoscopes day to day and they're looking at, okay, so right now Mars is in, in Capricorn and this is gonna happen. You know, they, they look at all of these together. So before I was talking about ascension, I got a little off topic. The sun, right, going into Pisces, and that was 2,000 years ago. If you don't know this, the horoscope was um, developed about 4,000 years ago. Um, so it was well before Christianity was, was even born. Um, you did have the older religions and things like that. But that's when the horoscope with the symbols that we understand now uh, was first created. So it's about 2,000 years between ascension. So we're now 2,000 years after the time of Christ. And that's why we're going, you hear people say the age of Aquarius, which is the sign before Pisces. So we're going backwards through the horoscope in another 2,000 years, <laughs> you know, it will change again. But if you, if you look at the climate at the time, uh, some people say that they take on the aspect of that sign. It's almost like looking at these going in an even longer period because a sun is one year, a moon is one month. You know, it takes um, 10,000 days or 27 years for Saturn to come around. So they talk about when Saturn, you know, when you're 27 years old or when 27 years have gone by, you know, you've revisited where Saturn was. That's actually a lyric in a tool song I love. Um, Saturn comes around again. It's on the album 10,000 Days. And that's, that is what 10,000 Days is. It's approximately the length it takes for Saturn to go around. So you can look at these as almost periods of time. And so Ascension is a 2,000 year period. Of course, that's several, several generations of people, but you can kind of see through history how things have changed. And I honestly think, you know, it, it, it's kind of a fuzzy gray area. I think it started in the 1800s because we've developed so much from what we were like before. That was a huge jump, the 18 and 1900s um, into now, we've, we've developed into something new. And one of those things is, is civil rights and understanding that slavery was wrong, um, starting with, you know, civil war. And I mean, there's still people enslaved today. Nobody really talks about it, but human trafficking is a crime going on. I don't want to get too political on that, but it's it's it still happens. People are sold, but it's not overt as it was before. It's 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 a crime for sure. People are doing it, uh, but it's not something that people do for business and have an entire farm, a plantation full of slaves working for them unpaid. Uh, that's that's not happening. But it's more it's in the sex trade now is what's sad um, against their will. So let's move back to gentler things. Venus is, of, I mean, of course, she's the goddess of love. Um, so this is how you act in a relationship. So, and this is what I said. I have my Leo aspect is in Venus. Devoted, passionate. And I'm going to put theatrical. This might be a negative attribute and I'm not putting a lot of the negative in here. I try to keep things on the positive, but you can see where this confidence and pride, strong willpower can go into something less desirable, something. And I did put egocentric in here as another descriptor word. So theatrical, which I am, especially in a relationship. I am, um, yeah, I, drama, right, can be <laughs> negative. So you can kind of see these aspects of the lion uh, going too far. Mars is... Um, it can apply, so love, sex is a different thing. And also just, you know, your energy levels uh, and 
Leos are energetic. I mean, they're related to the sun, the source of all energy on our planet. Confident. They're sexy and they know it. And I'm going to put egocentric, another maybe negative attribute. I wasn't sure if egocentric had a hyphen. I think it does not. I think it's one word. And the language is evolving. I've, I've started to just accept that. I used to get perturbed a little bit when people say uh, or conjugate words incorrectly, like saying conversate. But it doesn't scratch me the wrong way anymore. And you have to remember, we don't talk like we did 200 years ago. Language does evolve. I mean, you know, we have these romantic languages. Well, they all come from Rome. They, they were just dissolved versions of Latin. That's why Spanish and Italian words kind of sound the same, but they're not. So now we're on to Jupiter. And when I think of Jupiter, I always think of that father. He's the father god. Um, in Greek, he's Zeus. Um, I stick to the Roman, mostly because I took Latin, but also that's what the planets are traditionally called, their Roman names. And um, So Leadership is a big thing, and it will come out more when you have your Leo in Jupiter. And they will lead and inspire others, which is a, a, a noble quality to have. Is not only, you know, being able to lead, but inspire people to, to be their best. And then we come to Saturn. And this is your growth path in your life, like what you'll be working on in this lifetime. I'm definitely a follower of reincarnation and there's things that you're working on in, in this life and it can be hard to find that. Um, I've recently had a revelation that I am not here to be serious in this life. Um, I'm here to entertain and have fun and I'm, Kind of excited about that. So that's really what inspired me to do this today is let me entertain you. I hope you're being entertained. Are you not entertained? Confident. And assertive leader. I'm going to put an ampersand just to save face. So you can see a lot of leadership, confidence, Think of the sun, the shining sun. It wants to be admired and noticed, the center of attention, the center of our solar system. Even if they didn't know that 4,000 years ago, it took a long time to accept that. And there's still a group of people who, who don't want to accept that. They still want the um, geocentric universe, but the Earth is in the middle. You might know these group as the flat earthers, because... 4,000 years ago, they didn't know the Earth was also round. You know, they saw these round shapes in the sky. They didn't once think that our home was a round shape, too. So it's kind of interesting to think about. And last, I'm going to put a sunflower down here. And I am not used to drawing flowers. I'm not used to drawing animals either, so I'm far outside my comfort zone here. But I enjoyed it. I've um, been working on my drawing skills a lot. So it's it's been it's been fun to work on them. And it is hard to talk and ink at the same time because you're just so so focused. And sunflowers are actually a flower that kind of creeped me out. I learned about this phobia watching American Horror Story. I still can't remember the name of it. I, th I know it starts with a C, a K, a T. I don't know. But I'm uh, grossed out by surfaces that have, um, like the center of a sunflower, uh, coral. Um, even a stack of bricks once set me off. But I just get kind of nauseous seeing these textures covered in holes, like think about the roof of your mouth, um, just highly textured with caverns. 
and sometimes I, I really look at it and I think it's it's actually full of holes like voids I once had a, an interesting thought about it is you know phobias might be related to a previous death because <laughs> you've if you have previous lives you've you've died probably more than once right um, so you might have phobias related to that death because why wouldn't you fear the thing that once killed you and this is a weird one because they're nonlinear, right? You might have had a life short in the past, but time is a human illusion. Some of these past lives may be in the future or simultaneous to the one you're living in, which that's a weird thought, but I've seen someone and I, you have that, I remember being her. And it's like, what, what? I mean, there's one theory that there's only one soul and we're just spending time in each body, which I kind of like that one. Um, it amuses me greatly to think that you are that much one with the universe. There's only one soul and it's just being recycled continuously because there's infinite. That's infinity right there. Just being every person ever. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's a really weird one. But uh, going on to that phobia of the 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 holes and unevenness is I had a vision once of when the universe dies or a planet. Cause not all these lives are on earth, by the way. Um, the pattern it made was like holes. Think of like if the earth just disappeared and you watch the sky just stop being right. It wouldn't just like explode all at once. It would actually be like, like holes. That was just, I don't know. It, I know that sounds crazy, but it was a, a theory that I, I remember thinking about. And I was, that's, oh, sometimes you see things and you're like, why, <laughs> why am I? And it freaks me out. So anyway, this is something that's making me uncomfortable to draw, but I'm willing to do it for this page. And sometimes it's just good to, there's nothing to really be afraid of, of, of hold filled textures. But yeah, the center of a sunflower, it's kind of beautiful. It's got this pattern to it. I'm not even going to try and draw. I'm also got this on an ellipse, so it's it's like it's facing up towards the center of the page. I thought that would be really pretty instead of it just, I mean, it's almost pointed at the sun, which is the neat thing about a sunflower is if you took a slow motion camera or sat there and watched one all day, you would watch them move towards the sun. It's, it's an interesting, many flowers do this, but because of their size, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. And they grow in such large groups together. And they are food source. I often forget that. that. Some people have them growing on their property and they can gather those sunflower seeds and eat them. Because that's what this is in the middle. That's why it's so big and it's got this beautiful, it's probably a Fibonacci sequence as it seems like everything that spirals out <laughs> in nature is a uh, Fibonacci number. So it would start in the middle and then each round of the plant, right? And it makes this beautiful spiral. So in that way, it's beautiful, but it's the, the nubby, you know, texture of it that it upsets me. But I didn't know it was a common like phobia until it was mentioned in, I think it was uh, the cult. American Horror Story. And one of the characters was in her therapist office talking about it. And, and they had a name. And I went, wow, I had no idea this was a thing. So I hope this has the appearance of a sunflower. It was kind of fun to practice. That's what I did yesterday is I just sketched both of these things uh, until I was kind of happy with them. I drew them in different ways. And I've noticed when I do, I, I draw faces in three-quarter Mostly because I'm, I'm, I'm a new drawer and one of the classes I took was just draw everything in three quarter to start out. I'm going to not 
sure if I want to outline that. I think I'm just going to leave it doing what it's doing and then outline it in color. It doesn't need the ink. So the birthstone for a Leo, and often this is, I think, the August birthstone. As you can see, most of Leo is in August. They don't line up with our current calendar. I have a lot of conspiracy theories about calendars, but we won't get into that today. It's not really a conspiracy, but there's a lot of history of why calendars have changed and the things that are in them we're kind of stuck with now. I just don't see them changing. Uh, sunflower, of course, and gold is the metal associated with Leo. I don't know how long this has taken, and I don't know how to edit these videos, so I just thought I would droll on and on. So this is everything I wanted to write, but I don't know if I want to paint in the same video. I might make a separate one, just because this has gone on so long. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. I don't know, but I'm pretty proud of it. I'm going to stop here and then start a fresh video. I need to get some water anyway and put some watercolor wash. I'm going to take some pictures of this because another thing I thought I might do is make coloring pages or just a downloadable version for somebody who would like to build their own Grimoire Book of Shadows. They, they are, you are more than welcome to use my pictures, print them out, uh, and make your own. I'm going to talk about more how I'm organizing mine. This is my first page. So I'm not, some people just, I don't want to do a journal in the traditional sense. I'm actually putting these in a binder because you might want to change the order of them, right? And I'm not starting at Aries, obviously, and they're not all going to be horoscope related. I actually have lots of things I want to talk about, but I just thought every week, let me just do a page of what I want to draw. Eventually we'll get everything in there. I mean, this is a lifetime project. That's what a grimoire is. It's it's your lifetime knowledge poured into a book. Because just putting it on paper makes you understand it better. All right, so I'm going to sign off now, and I'm going to get my water ready, and I'm going to post a second video of me painting. It should go a little quicker, hopefully. I'm going to also clean up uh, some of the pencil graphite marks. So thank you all for watching. I hope you've learned a little bit about Leo today and enjoyed watching me ink this page. Thank you so much.